Say no. Just say no. Oh, for the sake of everyone's sanity, just say no to LED hotspots. They are terrible and oh, so irritating. Look at this, an LED chip with three individual light sources on it. You've probably seen these things light up before and if they weren't done right, you see hotspots. Oh, terrible hotspots. Look, here's one lit up right now. But let me turn down the exposure on my camera a little bit. Oh, perfect. Look at those. You can see those three individual light sources. And this is just a tiny LED light source. When you have a lot of these illuminating a room, it looks so irritating when you see all those hot spots. We do not want hot spots. We want smooth, consistent lighting that looks flat end to end. It is a little hard to get though. See, the best way to achieve that kind of satisfying light is with these things called light guides. And um, they're in a lot of places. They're in your screens, uh, your laptop screens, your monitors, your TVs, and they're actually starting to show up nowadays in proper illumination setups, which is excellent. But they do require some precision engineering to do properly. And today, for our lighting setup that we're making at home, I don't think we're quite ready for that yet. So we're going to go with the next best thing, Diffusion panels. Diffusion panels do exactly what you think they do. They soften the light so those three individual light sources appear like one. And if you can see, if, if I hold the diffusion panel further away from the light source, it diffuses it more. And when I bring it really close to the light source, you can start to see the individual light sources again. So there is a magic spot. There's a sweet spot where this would look perfect. And these are widely available, not very expensive, and easy to cut. But as you can see, we have to hold it at a certain distance away from the light source to get the best effect. And if we do that, we might lose some of the light that leaks out of the side. So we have to make sure we capture that and redirect it forward. Now, the best way to do that would be with optical lenses. But just like those light guides, they can also be fairly expensive and um, tough to manufacture. So I decided to use this. It's aluminum flashing can pick it up from any hardware store, does its job. It's not perfectly reflective, but you know, reflective enough. And uh, you can shape it and cut it in any way that you like. Word of caution, the edges can get sharp. So be very careful if you're gonna use this. It wasn't too difficult to shape this into a reflector. Take a look, here it is. There's actually two separate pieces of aluminum flashing that I cut and shaped to look like this. And yes, I know the corners are missing. The first time I did this, I actually did my best to try to fill in those corners, but it was so difficult to cut. And um, I decided I was just too lazy to do that each and every time. So this was far simpler. The other advantage is, if you remember our LED chips are gonna fit into those two little holes, I need a way for the wires to reach back behind the reflector. And so these gaps give us a perfect place to put those wires. Another bonus, this aluminum uh, flashing will double as a heat sink for our light sources. Yeah, you can probably tell that I eyeballed those angles over there. So it's really tough to get the exact shape each and every time. So the enclosure that we're gonna put this in, it's gonna have to be designed so that it holds this shape as best as possible. So here's what I wanna start with. This triangle shape over here is going to be that 3D printed panel, and this is our aluminum flashing. And of course, if this thing is 3D printed, that angle will be consistent each and every time. And here's our 3D model of the reflector body. By the way, the 3D modeling software we're using is FreeCAD 3D. I'm not going to get into the details in this video as to how this model was created, but if you're interested, I'll put a link in the description of another video we did where we go into all the gory details about creating 3D modeling um, parts in 3CAD 3D. And if you like that sort of stuff, make sure you watch it. It's wonderful. For now, let's continue on and build the rest of this 3D model. We need some way for this reflector to rest flat along that support. The first time I did this, I used glue to attach this panel to the reflector body, but that was messy and ineffective. I found it was much better to use my 3D printer a little bit more creatively so I could hold the panel in place. Kind of like that. If we 3D print this structure, it will hold that panel in place so it won't move. But if you watch the last video on 3D printing, you'll know that printing this in one piece is pretty much impossible. If you're interested, I'll put a link below to link back to that 3D printing episode. You can watch it in its entirety. The good news though, is we can print two pieces to have that same effect. And all we need to do 
is separate those two pieces right over there. We'll have one piece here and another piece here. Both of those pieces can be printed independently and then attached afterwards. And here's the second part that fits on top. You can see it in red um, on top of our green reflector body. And I know it's really difficult to see, but if I hide the reflector body and flip this around, you might be able to see that little ridge that kind of sticks down there. That's the ridge that's gonna hold the reflector panel in place. Not only have we created two pieces to hold this reflector in place, we also have a nice flat surface up here to hold our diffusion film. Now, you might be able to tell that this diffusion film is fairly floppy. We need something to hold it in place. Well, that's also pretty easy to get. This is a clear acrylic panel and it works wonderfully. If I take our diffusion film, put it behind the clear acrylic panel, I now have a nice solid surface to sit on top. Looking back at our drawing, you can see the diffusion film sitting down here and the plastic acrylic sitting on top. You can probably also tell that there's really nothing holding this in place, so we're gonna need that. But before we get to that, let's talk about how we're gonna route the wires or leads coming off the LED chip. So here's our LED chip being precariously held in place with my fingers and this reflector. The leads, the anode and cathode leads that are gonna be used to power this chip are gonna come off of that PCB and go back behind the reflector through, well, two of these corners. In our 3D drawing, you might be able to see where those leads are gonna go. I'm gonna hide the rim so you can see it easier. And yes, of course, there are four holes. You can see the four cutouts. We're only ever gonna use two of them at one time, but just um, for balance and uh, my own satisfaction, I needed this to be symmetrical, so I put four in there. So the wires will be able to go through those holes and around the back. And you can see how we have this little guide back here that leads us eventually to these two hex pockets over here. Those two terminals are gonna be the power terminals for our LED enclosure. And this is the nut that's gonna fit inside that hex pocket. Now, in order for this to work, this nut has to be essentially buried inside this enclosure so that the screw can then attach to that nut like so and make sure that, or that nut can't move. That nut can't spin and it can't be removed. So we have to very creatively design an enclosure so that this nut always stays inside, which means a separate part is gonna have to be 3D printed and then added on later to sandwich those nuts in. Here's the part that's gonna be printed. And you can see where the terminal screws are gonna go in. And there's also a couple of other things here. I've added these little uh, hanger thingies here that will allow us to attach this entire enclosure to a wall or some sort of a mounting device. And there's two other hex pockets that you see here, which are actually the other side of the screws holding in uh, our LED chip. And here's the added part on our drawing. Now the fourth and final part of our enclosure is going to have two functions. One, it's going to hold all of these pieces together, so we're going to have to devise a bit of a locking mechanism. And also, it's going to make sure that our acrylic um, plastic and the diffusion film is securely held in place. And here's the fourth and final part of our enclosure. Down here is going to be the screw and nut, which basically clamps this piece to that piece. And by doing so, it's going to hold this piece and this piece firmly in place along with the acrylic panel and the diffusion film. So everything will be a nice compact sandwich. And here's the final piece on our 3D model. It completely covers the rim really well. So looking down into the um, enclosure, you don't see any of that red rim, which is by design. But there is a gap underneath. If I spin this around and hide all the other pieces, you can kind of see the cutout over here where the acrylic panel will sit in, and that should help keep it nice and snug. If I bring back all the pieces, you'll also see how this thing connects to one another. So here's gonna be two screws on each side that will secure the purple frame to the gray base. Let me hide the frame and the core in the rim, and you'll see if I flip this around where the hex pocket will slip right in and help secure those two parts together. And after a nice 3D print, here it is. All four pieces. Here's the frame, the rim, the reflector body, 
and the base. Let's sandwich it together. Here it is partially assembled. There's our chip with the reflector, screws holding it in place with the leads going through those little gaps. And here's the rest of it with the diffusion and the acrylic plastic on top. Let's put it together. After snapping together, looks pretty good. Let's turn it on. Oh yeah, look at that. Smooth, flat, satisfying light with no hotspot.